Good afternoon. It's been a great pleasure to welcome you all and uh, Ambassador Farhad Arziev for this afternoon's interaction. It is a very uh, appropriate time to have this um, interaction because Uzbekistan is at the heart, at the core of Central Asia, civilizationally, historically, culturally. And uh, more than half the population of Central Asian republics is uh, Uzbek. It shares the borders with uh, all the other Central Asian countries. So in a manner of speaking, Uzbekistan is well positioned to be kind of a leader in uh, Central Asia. After uh, gaining independence in 1990, very quickly, the country was able to establish its sovereignty and also has been politically very stable, a very strong secular republic. President Shavkat Mirziyaev uh, took over in December 2016, and he really represents continuity with change strong political continuity, and also he has assured revolutionary changes in the, in the Uzbek society, in Uzbek foreign policy, and its uh, economy, in its worldview. Transformation in Uzbekistan, uh, President has introduced a lot of accountability among the organs of the state. There is more liberal atmosphere in the, in the country. Society is more open, economy is more open, foreign exchange rates have been stabilized, and uh, all this is good for the economic progress of the country. Another very important uh, initiative of uh, President Mirzaev has been to try to understand the root causes of religious fundamentalism and to address them in a way in which the society becomes a partner of the state, in which the religious institutions become a partner of the state, and in which even the preachers also become a partner of the state, so that the young men and women who are getting radicalized, they get identified in a, before they, they really fall prey to uh, extremism. Then, of course, uh, on 22nd December, there will be parliamentary elections. And uh, the, the slogan for that is, New Uzbekistan, New Elections. And uh, I read somewhere, perhaps our chief election commissioner would be uh, uh, going there as an observer. In those big relations, well, I was ambassador there uh, 2005 to eight. since then have grown very, very much, very solid and enduring foundation of which is cultural, which is civilizational, people to people. After President Mirzaev took over, he sent uh, Foreign Minister Kamilo, led a very large delegation in August 17 to boost ties with India, then presidential visit in October 2018, where I had the privilege of uh, of meeting uh, President Mirzaev in the state banquet. And uh, he did recognize that we could exchange a few sentences. So that was really a pleasure. Dollar one billion line of credit and a very good agreement was signed at that time uh, for sale of uh, yellow cake uh, to India. Then uh, President Mirzaev also came for the uh, vibrant Gujarat uh, uh, Global Summit, January 2019. Trade is also going very well. The third area where all of us would be also <coughs> be interested, uh, uh, Ambassador Zeb, is uh, regional initiatives which are being taken by President Mirzaev. There is a new uh, uh, sunshine in the in the area. The old differences are being reconciled, and. Um, whether it is the water resources or sharing of other resources. And on Afghanistan also, uh, Uzbekistan has taken initiatives. 
the march 2018 tashkent conference was uh, was very very important uh, in many ways uzbekistan is a front line state <clears throat> as far as afghanistan is concerned then um, uh, of course terrorism is uzbekistan has been a victim of terrorism it has been contained by very strong measures of the state but in october there was some incident on uzbek tajik border apparently 15 uh terrorists died um, maybe ambassador would like to uh, say something more about it what exactly happened then on regional understanding i think uh, uzbekistan has taken the lead and um, uh, president mirzaev had uh, uh, publicly at unga in uh, 2017 had said that there is need for the leaders of the five central asian republics to come together to at summit level and uh, and uh, exchange views to have more interaction and that was very favorably uh, responded to by the other leaders on 15 march 2018 there was astana summit and just uh, a few days back on 29 november in tashkent there was a summit in which the joint statement uh, says the sun one sentence is of particular interest to the indian audience which says that the five leaders decided to and i quote deepen integration in combating international terrorism religious fundamentalism etc to talk about all these and more uh, we have uh, ambassador faroz azzi um, uh, he represents the new generation of uh, uzbek uh, diplomats and civil servants and statesmen and thinkers post soviet post soviet generation <laughs> Uh, he studied in Tashkent State University, then City University of London, then Patterson School of Diplomacy and International Commerce. Ambassador Azeev was in a permanent mission of Uzbekistan in New York from 2004 to 2008. Then in Geneva, permanent mission of Uzbekistan in Geneva 2008 to 2009. Then deputy chief of mission in Germany, Germany 2014 to 2017, and in June 2000. 2017 uh, ambassador took, took charge as ambassador to india and uh, i am sure all of you who have been interacting with uh, uzbekistan uzbek embassy, uh, embassy would agree that he has brought lot of energy to the work of uh, the embassy of uzbekistan and india uzbekistan relations have really taken a very upward swing since ambassador azif came here. Now, with this, I'll request Hazrat uh, Zee to share his thoughts with us. Ambassador Tayal, thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you very much for uh, all of you being for being here, and also, I would like to thank uh, ORF, and in particular to. Uh, our dear friend, Mr. Nandan Krishnan. I was uh, joking him that uh, my uh, talk at ORF has been, you know, in the long, long waiting list. So, and I'm really happy that uh, today I have, a, uh, we have a, this opportunity to interact. Uh, so I would like to, uh, give you a little bit uh, the overview the briefing of uh, uh, the current and development process of uh, Uzbekistan and also I would like to <coughs> touch upon uh, uh, Uzbek Indian bilateral relations so first of all I would like to start with uh, the recent uh, uh, India uh, a recent uh, <coughs> uh, meeting of uh, Central Asian uh presidents in uh, in tashkent uh this uh, consultative meeting of uh, the leaders of central asian countries took place on 29th of november uh, 2019 in tashkent as it was already mentioned by uh, ambassador tayal uh so what is the significance of uh, this uh, uh the meeting uh, i would like to uh, give you some uh, you know the the main uh, uh, points of our uh, you know regional uh, policy as you know uh, uh, 
after uh, uh, coming to power, our new government, our new uh, president, uh, the regional, uh, uh, the, our region, neighborhood, uh, and in our foreign policy has become a topmost uh, priority of uh, our foreign policy. And uh, one of the initiatives that was put by, uh, forward by our Honorable President, it was to uh, uh, to hold uh, on a regular basis uh, the, the meetings, consultative meetings of the leaders of the region. So uh, last year, the first meeting was held in uh, Astana. And uh, this year, we uh, hosted this meeting in Tashkent. And the next meeting will be in uh, Kyrgyzstan. And so uh, we will take turns of uh, hosting this meeting uh, so, uh, when we talk about the current process in Central Asia, uh, you know, uh, we uh, should uh, uh, stress that for, for Uzbekistan, uh, Central Asia and our uh, and deepening our uh, wide scale relations with uh, our neighbors is uh, is a matter of uh, uh, topmost uh, priority for our uh, foreign policy. As uh, you, uh, if uh, you are familiar with uh, the current dynamics in the region, you uh, you might uh, uh, you might be aware of uh, the processes uh, and active, uh, uh, you know, the cooperation process in the region for the past uh, three years, and uh, there has been a tremendous uh, achievements and results in all areas. <laughs> And uh, basically, there is now um, uh, an, a completely new atmosphere of uh, cooperation and uh, uh, mutual understanding and friendship in the in the in the region. And uh, we uh, uh, would like to further deepen this uh, process, um, this uh, the process, and we are uh, keenly interested in in uh, creating more and more. Uh, the venues for <clears throat> deepening our uh, cooperation because <clears throat> we see our uh, present, uh, we see our past, present, and future uh, very much inter uh, interlinked with uh, uh, with uh, with each other. So during the uh, uh, Tashkent meeting, I would like to give you a little bit of briefing about um, the the. The Tashkent uh, consultative meeting of uh, Central Asian uh, presidents. So uh, during the meeting, it was uh, uh, once again emphasized that uh, Central Asia, uh, with its rich cultural and historic um, heritage, has always uh, served as a unique bridge uh, connecting different, uh, you know, the, the regions of the world. And uh, today, uh, this uh, region is uh, emerging is emerging as a. Uh, as uh, in, in, uh, with a new new potential, and uh, thanks to the political will and practical steps, we are reaching uh, the higher. We are uh, achieving the higher level of interaction, as it was uh, stated by our president during his um, speech at the, uh, the, the the meeting. And in in particular, we can see these uh, changes in uh, in all areas. Uh, if uh, we talk about uh, uh, easing the travel from uh, uh, country to country, people to people contacts, uh, because we have established uh, a visa free regime for you know cross cross border travels, and also for uh, you know uh, for uh, facilitating. Uh, you know, uh, mutual trade and economic uh, relations by creating more and more uh, venues for uh, for easing the trade, and therefore, for the last uh, couple of years, um, you you see the uh, the trade turnover between the inter interregional trade turnover has more than doubled only for the uh, for the last uh, uh, two three years, and uh, <coughs> also uh, you know. Uh, we uh, we see uh, great potential in also in other areas in in the area of uh, you know education humanitarian uh, cooperation cultural interaction so uh, basically our uh, the expansion of uh, cooperation in the region is uh, you know uh, is uh, 
demand of uh, the, the present time and the process of uh, Central Asian, you know, in intra-regional integration is, is, uh, is now irreversible. Uh, during the uh, Tashkent meeting, uh, you know, from uh, President of Uzbekistan has uh, put uh, a number of new initiatives which are aimed at further deepening the process of cooperation in the region. So, uh, first of all, he has proposed uh, to uh, to hold uh, uh, the the meeting of uh, the Central Asian Investment Forum, and also to organize the first ever meeting of the uh, uh, Central Asian countries Chamber of Commerce. Interestingly, in the past. We never got together uh, about with this, uh, you know, in this f uh, format, apparently. And also, uh, uh, we uh, have proposed to uh, speed up establishing the Council for Transport and Communications because, you know, Central Asia uh, is uh, is one of the biggest challenges for Central Asia is a lack of access to the seaports, direct access international seaports. So therefore, the uh, developing transport and communication uh, you know, connectivity options is, uh, uh, is really of uh, high importance for all uh, Central Asian countries. And also, uh, in, uh, uh, in terms of <coughs> expanding people-to-people -people contacts, uh, we have <coughs> proposed uh, to uh, uh, establish uh, inter uh, interparliamentary friendship group in the in the region. Uh, it is uh, to promote the parliamentarian uh, cooperation. Uh, and for the for the area of tourism, it is uh, we uh, the, 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 the Uzbekistan's initiated to uh, conduct uh, international regional conference on on tourism potential of the region because our purpose is you know a lot of people uh, travel to central asia to central asian countries but uh, in uh, in uh, quite often it is like on a separate individual country so now uh, our uh, proposal is uh, we uh, could uh, create a, like a combined uh, uh, to, to tour uh, packages and tour programs so it could be a, a regional tour for uh, for uh, for uh, tourists. Uh, so a tourist who can who visits India also at the same time he can visit the other um, the, you know countries in the region. So th this is uh, it's a, a new approach, a, the regional approach to tourism potential, and we believe that it can help to you know to better realize the. the tourism potential that uh, Uzbekistan and uh, Central Asian countries um, have. And uh, also, uh, you know, uh, being uh, historically and culturally, uh, uh, you know, have, uh, having the very deep links in uh, historical, cultural, traditional, and uh, so uh, there has been a proposal put forward also to uh, uh, as I mentioned, to create the uh, interparliamentary uh, friendship group, but also a special award, a Central Asian special award for the achievements uh, in the uh, area of uh, science, uh, culture, arts. Uh, so to uh, appreciate and to recognize uh, uh, the, the people who contribute at the regional level, uh, at the level of uh, in, our, uh, in our, our region. Uh, so uh, these are uh, uh, a number of initiatives uh, that uh, was uh, put forward by our honorable president at uh, the Tashkent uh, meeting of uh, Central Asian leaders. And of course, uh, 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 there were uh, the proposals and initiatives from other uh, participants of, uh, from other countries of the region also. Uh, uh, they all uh, related to, you know, Further deepening the political, trade, and economic, humanitarian, cultural cooperation in in the region. And <clears throat> as you know, that one of our 
uh, challenges is uh, uh, RLC problem. Uh, it is uh, uh, it is not now only a regional. A regional, uh, it has uh, maybe already it has a global, uh, you know, implications. And uh, <clears throat> this uh, uh, RLC issue also was uh, discussed uh, during the. Uh, the meeting and to take step uh, necessary steps to uh, address the environmental challenges that uh, Central Asia is uh, facing today. And uh, uh, also uh, when it comes to uh, ensuring uh, peace, uh, security and stability in the region also, of course, this is one of the uh, priority areas for all countries and uh, is, it was also as uh, on the agenda as one of the main agenda items on the during the meeting and uh, when we talk about uh, uh, you know peace and stability in central asia of course we uh, we uh, we uh, cannot uh, you know uh, not to mention uh, about uh, afghanistan which is also you know natural part of central asia and uh, therefore, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, uh, during the meeting in Tashkent, the leaders of Central Asian countries agreed to, uh, you know, further contribute to the peace process in, uh, in Afghanistan to support uh, the social and economic development of uh, the process in, in, in Afghanistan. So it was uh, stressed that, you know, uh, in, uh, in achieving peace in Afghanistan, the main uh, the main principles of uh, political settlement has to be uh, respected so it is uh, first of all it is uh, uh, you know uh, stopping the violence uh, stopping the, the, uh, the it is a ceasefire and uh, also demonstrating the readiness for uh, dialogue and uh, for a reasonable compromise in uh, for 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 each uh, other <coughs> Uh, we believe that uh, you know, um, in, uh, uh, in in deepening our uh, relations at the regional level, will create, uh, will uh, will uh, contribute to further uh, increase the uh, you know the potential of Central Asia as a international as a as a partner for international community, because. Um, uh, the more uh, uh, the, the closer the region, the countries in the region work uh, with each other together, the better the, the, the opportunities are for expanding trade and economic relations, for expanding transport and communications or the, the, the options. And also, so therefore it is now, uh, you know, Central Asia is becoming the, the, the region for opportunities. I could say, so, uh, and it is uh, by uh, consolidating joint efforts, Central Asia is only adding to its value as a, as a, uh, you know, predictable, reliable, and a strong, uh, you know, uh, international uh, partner in, in, in as, as a region. And of course, <coughs> we uh, uh, we see. And uh, this uh, <coughs> regional uh, <coughs> cooperation process uh, expand uh, expand beyond uh, Central Asia. So one of the uh, initiatives that was put forward uh, uh, by our uh, the countries in the region together with India, you know, it was the establishment of India Central Asia dialogue mechanism. So first uh, meeting of this uh, dialogue um, took place in uh, Samarkand uh, in January 2019. And uh, so next meeting of the dialogue will be uh, in uh, Delhi. And the date uh, and the exact dates are not been, have not been identified yet. Uh, but, uh, you know, as part of this uh, India-Central Asia dialogue, you know, for the past one, or almost one year, we have seen very much practical use of this mechanism. Already, uh, 
a number of uh, delegations came to India to attend uh, different training courses, for example. So it is helping uh, the, the, for the capacity building of uh, Central Asian countries. So the experts, specialists from different sectors of uh, the Central Asian countries attended these uh, different training courses in uh, you know, institutions and education centers in India. And as of today, uh, yesterday we have inaugurated a uh, festival of dance and music of Central Asian countries here in India as part of the India Central Asia Dialogue. So taking this uh, opportunity, I would like to invite you uh, today uh, at 6.30, we will be having the performance of a group from Uzbekistan at the Kamani Auditorium. And if you have time, and we would be very happy if you could join us uh, there. So uh, here we have some copies you can circulate of uh, the, uh, you know, the program, maybe you can. And uh, so this is also, uh, uh, you know, shows the, the practical value of this mechanism that has been created uh, uh, between Central Asia and India. Uh, and also, uh, you know, when we talk about India-Central Asia relations, you know, we have to uh, keep in mind that we have a very deep, a long, deep-rooted, uh, you know, connections. So this uh, creates um, very good, uh, I think, uh, uh, comfort uh, level of comfort for us to build uh, upon uh, our uh, contemporary, you know, cooperation. And uh, we uh, in, in Uzbekistan, we are keenly interested in uh, in uh, deepening our relations with India in all areas, it, whether it is. Uh, uh, political, economic, trade, uh, culture, humanitarian. And uh, we are really happy that uh, for the past couple of years, there has been a very, uh, uh, you know, unprecedented, uh, you, know, uh, you know, changes to the positive direction, unprecedented results in bilateral relations in, uh, in, in all areas. Uh, of course, uh, the highest level visits uh, and by our uh, honorable president uh, last year and also the beginning of this year as a chief guest to Vibrant Gujarat Summit. Uh, uh, besides, uh, we at the level of different minister, ministries and different um, departments in the private sector, you can also see very active uh, level of uh, interaction. Uh, actually, <coughs> uh, just uh, beginning of uh, November, we had a, a visit of uh, uh, Minister of Defense of India to Uzbekistan, which was for the, I think, uh, uh, for the f last 15 years, we have not had any the, uh, the defense minister visit to Uzbekistan. And also, uh, we uh, had the first ever joint military exercise in, in uh, Uzbekistan, Uzbek-Indian exercise. Uh, and also uh, last last week, uh, uh, the Minister of Interior Affairs of Uzbekistan paid an official visit to India, and it has been also the first ever official visit of uh, Minister of Home Affairs of Uzbekistan to India. And also, uh, just uh, two days back, uh, uh, we uh, I was in Gujarat with a very big representative delegation of uh, Uzbekistan headed by uh, uh, the Minister of Innovation, which, uh, President of Chamber of Commerce, and in, which also included uh, several key ministries, Minister of Agriculture, Investment, etc. And uh, about 50 people delegation, we were in Gujarat to uh, discuss in, uh, the business, trade, and investment projects with Indian companies. Uh, this was the f why we went to Gujarat with the focus on Gujarat. It was a, uh, the follow-up visit to the Chief Minister of Gujarat, uh, Mr. Vijay Rupani's visit to uh, Uzbekistan, which took place in uh, 19, 20, uh, 19 and 22nd October 2019. So basically, we see a really a big, uh, you know, interest from. Uh, private sector also, uh, Indian side, 
and also Uzbek uh, <coughs> private sector for uh, and uh, they uh, we see uh, really big uh, potential which uh, so far we have not uh, utilized uh, uh, maybe even not half of the potential has been utilized and the trade uh, of course uh, now uh, the volumes are not uh, uh, that high but uh, the target is to uh, reach those uh, to uh, increase the trade volumes at least to 1 billion within the short uh, the, the span of uh, time and uh, you know uh, the you know our uh, assessment and also is the same from indian side show that uh, we can easily reach uh, these uh, targets uh, if we put uh, joint effort and if we uh, take uh, right uh, and the necessary steps to, to reach that. For that, we have now uh, initiated the process of uh, concluding the preferential trade uh, agreement with India. And uh, we are now in the process of forming the working groups from both sides. And we hope that uh, maybe within the period of one year, we will conclude this agreement and we will be able to uh, sign this preferential trade agreement with India, which we believe will open new uh, uh, opportunities for bilateral trade and economic uh, relations. And <clears throat> now I would like uh, to <clears throat> tell you a little bit about uh, uh, the elections which uh, we are planning to hold in Uzbekistan. So <clears throat> parliamentary elections will be uh, for the lower house of our uh, parliament. Uh, and it, uh, the elections will take place on 22nd of uh, December this year. And the five uh, political parties will participate in these elections. And uh, about 20 million people will participate as a voter of, in these elections. And uh, uh, we, will, uh, we are expecting more than 500 international observers, including from uh, you know, international and regional organizations, also including from India and uh, more than a thousand uh, international local mass media will cover the elections and we are expecting uh, about uh, 12 uh, ob observers from from india including from chief election commission's office uh, maybe chief election commissioner himself or maybe he can he will uh, depute someone to attend but uh, we we think that uh, you know uh, this uh, this year, uh, you know, you can see if you are uh, uh, if you are following the, the process in Central Asia, in Uzbekistan in particular, you can see uh, the election campaign and the, the process the, of uh, the preparation for elections are very much different than uh, in the past. And these, uh, you know, therefore, you know, uh, the the motto of uh, the elections are for this year is a new Uzbekistan and uh, new elections, as it was already mentioned. So I give you a little bit of uh, uh, outline of the, the some basic or main reasons why we are talking about uh, new uh, Uzbekistan and new uh, elections. So first of all, for the past uh, the three, three years, an uh, uh, unprecedented reform process has been underway in Uzbekistan. In the beginning of 2017, under the initiative of uh, our Honorable President, His Excellency Mr. Shavkat Mirziyoyev, a new national development strategy of Uzbekistan was adopted. And the strategy has been consistently put into action since then. So firstly, <clears throat> when we are talking about uh, new Uzbekistan, we are talking about, <clears throat> about uh, openness and uh, transparency in the society, ensuring law, uh, rule of law, strengthening democratic principles, protecting rights and freedoms of each and every citizens have become top priority of uh, the government policy. Today, we have uh, vibrant uh, TV channels, 
uh, newspapers that freely discuss any topic, uh, any pressing topic of uh, the people's interest. Social media has become uh, the integral part of the society, and the dynamic civil society is actively contributing to the process of development of the country. Secondly, there is a higher level of uh, accountability and responsibility uh, of the government bodies before the ordinary citizens. From the very beginning of the reforms, the, uh, the president of Uzbekistan put it very firmly that it, should, it is not the people who should uh, serve the government, but it is uh, the, the government bodies should serve the people. And today, this principle has deeply rooted in everyday life of every government official uh, in Uzbekistan. Thirdly, uh, why we are talking about Uzbek uh, open uh, new Uzbekistan. So this is our citizens, political parties are actively participating in the process of uh, state and public administration in political process in decision making. Uh, today, the needs of citizens, ordinary people are the main source and driving power of the reforms that we are implementing. Another uh, point is that we are making continued progress in fight against corruption. Nationwide uh, governmental commission has been established on fight against corruption, and its work is supervised by the president of Uzbekistan. Rule of law and justice are the four most important principles in our reform process. We see these uh, elements to be the key in ensuring inclusive and su sustainable development. Sixth point that I wanted to highlight is the economic reforms. As a result of reforms, uh, completely new conditions for social and economic development have been created. One can say that revolutionary and bold steps have been taken for, um, to, to liberalize in the, in the economy and create a better and wider chances for business and entrepreneurship to grow. And also I would like to touch upon our foreign policy priorities as part of the new national development strategy of Uzbekistan. I already mentioned that I already stressed that for Uzbekistan, the Central Asian region, deepening friendly relations with our neighbors is the topmost foreign policy priority. Under the new regional policy of our honorable president, thanks to concrete political and diplomatic steps taken by Uzbekistan, a new political atmosphere in Central Asia was created Today, the countries of the region enjoy high level of mutual trust, confidence, support, and friendship. With these uh, few points, uh, I uh, uh, want to just uh, to give you why we are talking about um, new Uzbekistan and new elections. Uh, you know, today, uh, uh, indeed, uh, you know, uh, if you have visited Uzbekistan, let's say maybe five years back or ten years back. And if you visit Uzbekistan today, you can see for yourself uh, what uh, is the big uh, difference and what are the you know the uh, the real changes that are taking place in in, in the country. Here, uh, I know uh, uh, some of you already very much uh, you know familiar with uh, the uh, the region, and I see, uh, for example. Professor Pandey, he is, uh, maybe he, is, he has a better knowledge than myself of the regional process. <coughs> ambassador Tayal also, he was in, uh, in Uzbekistan as an ambassador. He also follows very closely even these days uh, uh, the events in, uh, in the region. And uh, Mr. Nandanun Krishnan, Akhtar Zafar, and uh, Nirmala Joshi also, I can see. So these, uh, you know, uh, maybe during the course of uh, interaction, uh, maybe uh, some of you also can share your uh, thoughts and uh, the views on uh, our, uh, on, on Central Asia, on Uzbekistan, on India, Uzbekistan, and India, Central Asia uh, relations. And also uh, since uh, ORF is, uh, I think uh, one of the the main organizers of Rezina Dialogue. So I would like to inform you that uh, for the upcoming uh, the meeting of uh, the Rezina Dialogue, 
we will also, uh, the delegation of Uzbekistan will also uh, participate. Thank you very much. So here <clears throat> is the text of the joint uh, statement uh, from the, the Tashkent meeting of Central Asian <coughs> leaders. I just believe maybe uh, you can just uh, look. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador, for uh, your uh, remarks. You covered a lot of ground and how Uzbekistan is changing, how a new Uzbekistan is uh, unfolding in front of our eyes. You briefed us about the 29 November, very important consultative meeting in Tashkent and the regional integration. Really, I think all of us in India, all the friends and well-wishers of Central Asia are very keen that Central Asia comes together and takes charge of its own fate and Central Asia should <laughs> never again be any kind of an object of any kind of a great game by uh, powers which are external to Central Asia. And in <coughs> that objective, in that goal, in that direction, India <coughs> is your friend and your partner. And then, um, um, as you also covered, uh, India-Uzbekistan relations, India-Central Asia dialogue, Defense Minister's visit, it was an absolute uh, first time in 15 years, and there is a new area of cooperation which is now opening up between uh, India and Uzbekistan. And uh, elections, you mentioned the new elections which are taking place, preferential trade agreement between India and Uzbekistan, new development strategy of Uzbekistan, that under that overall uh, vision, how uh, different aspects of life of Uzbekistan are, uh, are uh, changing. Um, I, of course, we have uh, experts on uh, Central Asia or Uzbekistan here. And, but before I open the floor for question, I one small query. I, I recall that um, as you were pursuing closer um, uh, cooperation between India and Uzbekistan in information technology area. Mm -hmm. Uh, has something been happening? Any any progress in that direction? Yes, uh, on <coughs> IT sector, actually, we uh, this year we have created uh, with the support of India STPI, we have created uh, IT park in Tashkent. So this is, I think, one of the uh, very important results of those efforts. And now uh, we have uh, several IT companies from India who became already resident of this IT park. Excellent. And also uh, <coughs> we are now uh, in discussion with NASCOM and some other uh, the organizations and also private uh, IT companies to uh, implement uh, IT projects in Uzbekistan. I think uh, maybe right now it might be a little early to announce, but maybe in the beginning of uh, next year, uh, we are planning to, uh, you know, to sign a uh, very important agreement uh, on uh, on this uh, with the focus on IT IT uh, sector with uh, Indian IT companies, and we see this uh, IT and innovation is a, as a very promising direction of uh, cooperation. Actually, we uh, recently had our uh, Minister of Innovation okay. visiting uh, India, and he also met uh, with a number of uh, IT and innovation companies of, of India. It is very important because, um, unfortunately, the physical connectivity issues will remain with uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, again in some trouble. Iran is having its own problems with the with the West. So the digital highway perhaps is the solution for India and Central Asia to come together. Last now, year, uh, I think it was, the, there was, uh, uh, I think, uh, during the Indian Uzbek Business Forum, I think a former pres uh, Minister of uh, Trade and Commerce, Mr. Suresh Prabhu, he was talking about digital Silk Road. Digital so. <laughs> Floor is open. Any comments, queries, Professor Pandey? Thank you. 
uh, very much, uh, Ambassador Tayal and uh, Ambassador Arziev. Um, well, as Ambassador Arziev said, I have been visiting uh, Uzbekistan many times. Uh, one time was when Ambassador Tayal was uh, in Tashkent, and I had gone for uh, presidential election 2007-8. Uh, December, and uh, some of the things that uh, uh, election process in uh, Uzbekistan impresses anyone from India going there. One is uh, the fact that they have given reservation to women, more than 30 percent reservation to women. Another peculiar feature is uh, the special focus that environmental issues. There was an environmental movement earlier which had 15 seats. Now, now it is, uh, yes, party, and uh, 15 seats are reserved for environmental parties. So that is yet another very um, uh, interesting uh, feature of uh, uh, Uzbekistan's elections. Um, another thing is that the uh, orderly way in which I saw voters uh, going to polling booth with their passport and voting, special arrangement for uh, ladies, women going with children, uh, there was facility for the children to stay for some time. So these were some of the very good things. One small query, uh, which is about, uh, there was uh, a proposal <coughs> to create a special pharmaceutical uh, region, region zone in Andijan. Uh, what is happening? Also because Andijan is a region uh, which is very well connected with neighboring countries, Osh Jalalabad uh, in Kyrgyzstan or Khujant, and all these areas are uh, very with heavy population, lot of population. Uh, so it is the right place in that sense for uh, starting uh, pharmaceutical uh, projects or initiatives. And uh, the other Central Asian countries uh, can uh, involve, can get involved with this initiative. So maybe some developments on that. Another query about uh, the recent meeting of the five Central Asian uh, presidents. Uh, I believe even the Turkmen president was there. He came. This was for the first time, I believe, yes. that even he attended. Now, one uh, interesting um, uh, fact about this meeting was that the word integration, I saw somewhere in some of the uh, news reports. <laughs> Earlier, uh, we know that uh, Uzbekistan talked about cooperation, regional cooperation. Somewhere the word integration uh, came. Uh, what was the context? Uh, is there any plan uh, to take further uh, the regional integration going beyond cooperation uh, among the Central Asian states? There have been other, in, there have been initiatives, I know. So maybe if you can enlighten us something on this, on pharma and <coughs> then on this. Maybe I can take some more questions, yeah? Any other question? No, no. Uh, thank you, Ambassador. That was very uh, informative <coughs> and not as nice as Sandy. So, mind would be a little bit more blunt to the question. Okay, follow up to his integration question. Uh, <coughs> and integration in Central Asia has been a quest which has been uh, mentioned many, many years ago. In fact, it goes back to the beginnings of soon after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Uh, people have been talking about the need to economically integrate uh, these regions. They have complementary economies in some ways. However, there have been other processes which have been more successful, in a sense. And one of them is the Eurasian Economic Union, which involves now Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. So if there is any attempt to create a Central Asian integrated uh, economic body, doesn't this cause or will this not cause some kind of contradiction with uh, the EU, which is looking at the world slightly differently? So the Eurasian Union, that is first question. The second is that uh, uh, you mentioned that we've held these military exercises for the first time. And uh, I'm just curious to know uh, what uh, Uzbekistan thinks are the benefits of uh, jointly exercising with the Indian Army. Uh, in the context that it is Uzbekistan, particularly at uh, this 29th summit, 
which spoke of trying to create a zone of peace in Central Asia. And military exercises don't contribute to peace necessarily. I mean, they add to uh, militarization in a sense. So is there any kind of contradiction in this? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, of course, the question on uh, regional cooperation has, okay, has already come up. Uh, how do you think it is moving forward? In which areas it is moving forward? Like uh, whether it is settlement of borders, whether it is settlement of your internal issues, problems. These, uh, I mean, it's a very good development. It has started, and the Tashkent uh, uh, conclave, the meeting, was very good. Uh, it's a very good augury for uh, Central Asia because it is one of the least integrated regions in, in the world. And I would also like to have your comment on, uh, there was a time, I don't know whether that still holds true, that um, Central Asia was one of the most highly weaponized regions of the world. And this because after the Soviets left, they left back some uh, weapons. <coughs> Then there was the Tajik civil war. Then the Russians came in in, in Tajikistan. So this, this is what was the reason why it was called one of the most weaponized regions in the world. I don't know whether that still holds true. And, uh, uh, and the other is, uh, how does Uzbekistan evaluate the peace process in Afghanistan? Particularly the talks that are going on between the US and, uh, and the Taliban. Which section of Taliban, how they are. Thank you. Yeah, <coughs> thank you very much. First of all, it's about uh, uh, pharma zone, yeah. Uh, this initiative has already been uh, put into practice. So last year it was initiated, and now at the beginning of this year we have already established, uh, we can say, uh, Uzbek uh, Indian uh, pharmaceutical zone in Andijan. It's called Andijan Farm, and um, the, uh, the highest number of uh, the companies are there, registered the Indian, Indian companies. Uh, I can mention that one of the biggest uh, uh, Indian pharma companies, Cadilla Pharmaceuticals, also uh, signed an uh, agreement, investment agreement with uh, with us to put up a, a manufacturing plant in in Andijan. And of course, we are uh, talking to uh, some other, uh, you know, companies also. <coughs> big, I mean, the big ones to to come. And uh, I think uh, they also they are also uh, seeing themselves, uh, you know. A big market and a big, uh, you know, market opportunity for, for, uh, for, uh, for themselves, and at the same time, it will help us also to increase our capacity of uh, <coughs> manufacturing capacity and also to reduce uh, our import of uh, pharmaceuticals. You know, we import uh, the, the most part of our pharmaceutical products comes uh, as an import. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, even with India, uh, in the, uh, the you know more than seventy percent of our import from India is pharmaceutical product, drugs. Uh, about the, the Tashkent, uh, the meeting, of course, you know you the initiative of <clears throat> uh, of uh, holding this uh, meeting comes uh, from uh, Uzbekistan so uh, the initiative was put forward by our honorable president uh, in 2017 and the last year we had uh, the first uh, the, the meeting and this year uh, we have uh, we have held the second meeting this fact itself shows you know the the practical uh, value and uh, the you know the viability of this uh, mechanism and the need 
for such a, such a mechanism in, in the region. You know, <coughs> dialogue is always good, and any mechanism of dialogue is also good, because it gives you to discuss the things that, uh, you know, uh, otherwise might not be discussed. And also, it gives you the chance to push some process which otherwise might be stuck somewhere. So, and also, you know, it is uh, the interest of the countries of the region to, uh, uh, to work more and more closer with each other in all areas. Since we all uh, agree in the region that uh, you know our as uh, as we have a common past uh, the likewise we have a common future so therefore we believe that um, these efforts and uh, you know the, the policy of uh, you know uh, making this uh, cooperation closer and uh, and uh, creating a creating a new venues, new uh, um, the mechanisms that can strengthen this cooperation will only benefit uh, for the uh, interest of, of the region. But of course, uh, you know, uh, as far as to my knowledge, uh, there has not been any discussion of creating any uh, sort of, uh, you know, integration, uh, you know, organization or like um, Mr. Nandakrishnan mentioned, something like, you know, uh, similar to Eurasian. Uh, as of my knowledge, as of, uh, as, uh, as of now, there has not been any, any uh, you know, discussion about it. But, uh, the, you know, we have, uh, we have to uh, keep in mind, you know, for example, being in, in one region and being naturally and historically connected and uh, also depending on each other you know it requires uh, the natural process of you know being close uh, to 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 each other for example if uh, you know uh, uh, professor nimala joshi he, she asked about what are the concrete areas that where we see these uh, you know uh, the countries are uh, coming together. You know, I give you very uh, few simple examples. For example, in the past, we did not have direct air connectivity between Dushanbe and Tashkent. So now, just, you know, recently we have, uh, we have uh, restored this direct connectivity. Or uh, we, uh, we had a very strict visa regime now there is no visa regime. You can easily cross the border for you know for a certain period of time, and also now we are creating cross-border trade uh, zones to make you know cross-border trade uh, you know the, to facilitate it. In the past, it has not uh, been the case. And <clears throat> if we talk about the border issues, you know <clears throat> now we have uh, we have. Uh, uh, with Kyrgyzstan, for example, we have almost, uh, you know, completed uh, the entire border area. Some f very small part remained. And this work was done just uh, within a very short period of time. So there is a real progress. And uh, if we talk about, for example, you know, uh, the, as I mentioned, trade. So more than double. The, the the numbers of uh, intra intra regional trade so this is all you know you know to the benefit of of uh, the country all countries in in the region and uh, also uh, uh, on uh, the afghanistan you know <coughs> you know uh, you know the peace and security peace and stability in afghanistan is uh, very crucial for uh, uh, for entire region, for Central Asia, for Uzbekistan, and other other, other countries as well, and for India, and uh, of course, uh, there is a, there is a, no alternative of uh, establishing peace in Afghanistan than, you know, uh, the coming 
all you know the parties uh, coming together <coughs> on a compromise. Uh, but you know, uh, there is uh, there is no military solution to Afghan problem. There is only you know political uh, solution. And of course, you know the peace and the uh, negotiations in Afghanistan, any political settlement in Afghanistan, it has to be Afghan-led, Afghan-owned, and Afghan-controlled. <coughs> this is uh, what we sincerely believe. And uh, there has to be uh, there has to be cooperation at different levels also, at global level, at regional level, at the level, and also in inter intra-Afghan level. So these three dimensions has to be there. And uh, from our side, we, uh, we are keenly interested in uh, making our positive contribution to peace and stability in Afghanistan. And uh, you know, you know I, if we talk about, for example, contributing to social and economic development process in Afghanistan. So this is also a contribution to peace and stability. And uh, Today we have uh, our uh, special envoy of our uh, president on Afghanistan visiting India. And uh, we had a very good uh, uh, meetings uh, with, uh, with um, the, uh, the Indian government officials. And uh, also, you know, in our, uh, in our approach to um, ensuring peace in Afghanistan, uh, stability in Afghanistan, we believe that you know, all countries of the region uh, should, you know, you know, join efforts. Otherwise, uh, you know, uh, it might not be possible. And uh, uh, the question about uh, weaponization, <clears throat> I don't think that uh, Central Asia is a uh, highly weaponized uh, region. And as a matter of fact, you should appreciate that uh, Uzbekistan initiated the creation of a nuclear weapon free zone in Central Asia to get rid of the nuclear weapon with, which was uh, there uh, at the time of uh, collapse of so Soviet Union. So this is a very significant contribution to, you know, global, uh, to strengthen the global mechanism of peace and security. And, you know, thanks to our common efforts in the region now, our region is a nuclear free weapon zone. And uh, of course, we, uh, you know, you know, we, uh, we don't, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Nandan Unakrishnan, he was uh, putting the question about this military exercise, you know, this is from which angle you approach. And uh, I don't think that uh, military exercise necessarily means that you are focusing on uh, on uh, military means, but it is just a regular exercise of uh, of uh, you know uh, of the routine nature which takes place uh, between countries of of the world. You know, it is like you are you are we are as a <coughs> yeah, think tank to think tank. You have uh, workshops and the seminars. It's uh, you can consider it from from that uh, from that angle. It will help you to, you know, uh, you know, to to learn the best uh, best uh, practice, and I don't think that, uh, and I disagree with uh, the statement that military uh, joint exercise is uh, means uh, uh, that you know focus on military. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't agree with this point. Thank you, Ambassador. Yeah. Thank you, Chair, and. Uh, Ambassador Azir for your remarks and informing us about the current situation in Uzbekistan in the region and about this consultative meeting, summit meeting here. <coughs> uh, basically, my question is related to the economic aspect, which I think was the focus of this year's uh, uh, consultative meeting. So when there is greater economic activities, trade or movement of finance, then I think uh, capital will move from one country to another country. So a mechanism has to be there. And this is the problem of a major problem for trade between India and Central Asia also. So we don't have a robust banking uh, system. <coughs> Was there any discussion uh, to have a pan regional uh, kind of banking system uh, uh, or you see it emerging, which can also be helpful later for uh, India as the PTA is ongoing, talks on PTA is ongoing. 
And uh, second thing is about uh, Afghanistan. I think uh, Professor Nirmala Joshi asked about it. So uh, I think the, uh, the current activities were initiated uh, uh, with the conference hosted by Uzbekistan in March. So it was taken further <coughs> with the Moscow format and then a US and uh, directly negotiating with <coughs> So what currently Uzbekistan's role is in, uh, it sees the role it can play in Afghanistan and do you see any scope for India-Uzbekistan cooperation in uh, Afghanistan? political settlement in uh, in Afghanistan. But do you think that is possible? Because you know, with so many external parts now getting involved, trilateral meetings, bilateral meetings, quadrilateral meetings, all going on. So <coughs> what kind of a settlement with different, different groups? The, the one which goes to Russia is a different group. The one which negotiates with the uh, US is a different group. So, I mean, how do we, how does Afghanistan attain this political settlement and peace? I mean, any, how do we move forward? <coughs> if I knew uh, the solution to this problem, <laughs> I would have been a very popular person. So uh, anyway, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, as I just want to uh, start with your question, uh, you know, the ensuring peace and achieving peace and stability in Afghanistan, it uh, takes uh, it takes a lot of efforts. So as I mentioned already that, uh, you know, our approach is that these efforts should be at different levels, global level, regional level, and the intra-Afghan level. So uh, there has to be, you know, uh, consensus and, uh, you know, consolidated effort at the global level, at the regional level, and also at uh, the in, inside Afghanistan itself. Of course, you know, you have different uh, interests, you have different uh, parties, different groups. <coughs> But uh, the point of uh, you know, uh, you know, achieving the peace stability is to bridge all those gaps and to bring all uh, you know the, the you know, interested parties together. So I think this is uh, where everybody is uh, you know focusing now. All you know uh, the countries uh, who are uh, you know, trying to uh, contribute to peace and uh, stability in Afghanistan. <coughs> Unless, uh, you know, there is uh, this uh, uh, consensual approach, of course it would, be, it would be difficult to achieve the result. But in any case, you know, the, the fate and destiny of Afghanistan is in the hand of Afghan people, you know. No one from outside has the right to decide for themselves, for, for them, you know. That's why, you know, it has to be, you know, Afghan led and Afghan owned. Otherwise, it will not be sustainable. It will break away again. So, therefore, you know, it takes a lot of common effort, uh, you know, and of course it is not an uh, easy, easy task as you perfectly understand yourself. And about, uh, uh, the current level of bilateral relations, of course, we are, uh, we can say today uh, our uh, India-Uzbek bilateral relations is uh, in a very dynamic, uh, you know, the state. It, uh, for the past uh, couple of years, it has taken really new heights. If you compare with, uh, you know, uh, with uh, uh, the dynamics of the bilateral relations with uh, several years back and uh, in the recent uh, dynamics, you can see big, uh, the difference yourself. 
I give you only one uh, small example which is not related to politics or economics. It is about people-to-people -people contacts. Uh, 2016, uh, 2017, we had uh, tourists from India, uh, somewhere like uh, around 14,000. And this year, it is uh, 30,000. So you can see the difference, right? And uh, about uh, the financial institutions, banking cooperation, yes, we think that it is very important. And especially if we talk, when we talk about India Central Asia, the banking service is really important for uh, servicing trade. And maybe uh, we, are <clears throat> we are inviting some uh, Indian banks to consider uh, open their branches uh, but maybe, uh, maybe in the in the near future there will be some uh, developments. But in the region itself, uh, we see now, you know, different banks are uh, opening their branches in in Uzbekistan. But of course, you know, we would like uh, we would love to see uh, Indian, uh, you know, banks to be. <coughs> Uh, present and active in 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 the region, in in particular in Uzbekistan, because it will help us to uh, you know to support and to facilitate trade, because in trade is banking, payments, you know, mutual uh, payments is also important. Any questions? Yeah, please. <coughs> okay. uh, yeah, sure, please. Just, to, uh, just because I work on China Central Diplomacy and how this unfolded in Central Asia and what is being just respond. So uh, my question is when it comes to the uh, <coughs> national development strategy of Uzbekistan, so does Uzbekistan considers BRI as a as a partner in its new strategy? You know, the national uh, development strategy is you know uh, uh, you know as uh, uh, it is everywhere. When you do your national development strategy, you uh, focus on your you know national priorities. Uh, uh, the, if we talk about uh, transport and communication and connectivity options. Uh, you know, uh, of course, you know, transport, developing transport and communications uh, in Uzbekistan and beyond Uzbekistan is in our interest. You know, Uzbekistan is one of the two countries in the world which has a, a, the status of double landlocked country. Uzbekistan and Liechtenstein. Yeah? <coughs> Liechtenstein's case is easy because they are uh, close to the sea. In our case, it's uh, you have to travel 3,000 kilometers to reach the, the closest international seaport. So therefore, uh, any uh, transport and communication project that can help us to reach the world market is in our interest. This is the natural you know, choice. When you don't have access to direct access to the sea, when you depend on transport corridors to, you know, support your sustainable development, your you know, trade and economic relations. So this is the, the natural choice that you always you support the transport and communication projects that connects you, that connect you with, with the, the world market. What about high risk that INST, um, INST also one of the projects that we see a practical benefit, and we support INST. <coughs> but um, when it comes to practical implementation, I think uh, the countries who are you know, part of the INSTC, I think it has to be, you know, uh, the more attention to put it in uh, in place as soon as possible. You know, because INSTC is also one of the projects that helps us to reach uh, the other bigger markets. What is the progress on Chabad? I mean, there was this talk of connecting via Afghanistan. 
we are, uh, you know, very much interested in uh, being connected with Chabahar. We support Chabahar project, and we see uh, really big uh, opportunity and very big practical value in Chabahar. It will only expand. It will only expand the connectivity uh, opportunities for uh, between India and Central Asia. <laughs> and uh, as uh, you know, far as as it, uh, far as Uzbekistan concerned, you know, we are uh, you know in you know we would like to see you know now there is a railway connection from uh, you know Mazar Sharif to you know Kabul. Uh, and uh, we would like to uh, extend uh, this, uh, you know, further towards, you know, uh, the Herat and uh, the beyond to, you know, to reach the, the via Iran to, to Chabahar. So, of course, it is, uh, you know, it is, uh, y you know, you have to take, uh, you know, into account that it requires uh, financial resources, uh, it requires you know coordination with uh, you know the, the countries. So, but we uh, this is uh, you know our uh, you know practical interest uh, to have this uh, project uh, to be in place. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador, for your very informative presentation and uh, very clear and candid answers. And it has really taken the format of an interaction. And uh, we go back uh, better informed about India, Uzbekistan relations, Uzbekistan, the way it is moving forward. And of course, the regional interaction, which may lead some at some point to integration. Mm -hmm. Please Ambassador, join. I just wanted yeah. to, uh, you know, uh, not to be confused about this, uh, from uh, Hairatan to Mazar and from Mazar Sharif to Hirat, this project. So I mentioned my mistake in Kabul. <coughs> so for you to understand. Uh, now there is uh, already a line from Hairatan, which is uh, border at Termis to Mazar Sharif. Mazar. So now the idea is to extend it to Hirat and uh, then the, take it further. Is there any uh, discrepancy or problem with the, the same railway gauge, the gauge, the gauge, on the Uzbek side? And uh, the this uh, technical detail, uh, I wouldn't know, would know, but uh, as long as since this Hayratan Mazar Sharif rail is, there is know, also working. Very so please join me in... Uh, Thanking Ambassador Zeev and all his colleagues for this presentation. And please join us for a couple of minutes.